All right, so I'll just uh, uh, say a few more words about what we said last time. So we, we started with k number field. And uh, kVs are the various completions. And the omega is a set of places of k. And v runs in omega. Okay. And then we have a variety x over k. And most of the time it will be smooth, projective, geometrically connected. Okay, some people call this nice, but I don't like the expression, so <laughs> I, I tend to say everything. Okay. And then uh, we assume we're interested in the following case that x uh, is geometrically rationally connected. So, which means that uh, take an embedding k in C, then uh, for x C, any two uh, complex points. are connected by a P1. So there's a morphism from P1C to XC, sending 0 to A and infinity to B. So this is, we're interested in this. this uh, I would just say rationally connected for, for short. Okay. And then we consider the general inclusions which we have, X of K, set of rational points, sitting in uh, x of a k, the adelic points, which is the product for all v of the local points. And here we have a topology, so we can take the closure. And then I mentioned that in the middle, there's a sub the closed subset of this set, which is the Brahman in set. Well, I, okay, I can read. Re so we have uh, to x, this is associated the bar group of x. And this is functorial in x, not in a scheme, in a scheme x. Functorial. And then I reminded you, so and then, then there was this basic diagram like this x of k. Uh, and then you take a in the bar group of x. And say so x here is simply pro uh, projective. You send x of k to uh, to bar of k. Each time you have an element a in the bar of x by evaluation of a. And then you send it to the product. You, know, you take the diagonal map into the product of the x of kv in omega. Then you evaluate under a, and you actually land because x is projective in the direction of bar of kv. This is something I will explain sometime later in the lectures. And then here you have the the basic sequence from classic theory, Q mod Z. And this is a complex. This is zero. This is generalized low for characteristic reciprocity. Of reciprocity. And so you take to define the composite here, call it theta A. And the fact is that uh, X of K is in the kernel of this map. Because if I start from a point here, I get zero here. So X of K is uh, x of k lies in uh, the part of this thing which is orthogonal to a. So x of a k orthogonal to a. But then I can do that for all the a's in bar of x. And then I get this closed subset in x of a k. And this is the Brahman inset. I will see concrete examples later. So I mean, after one lecture or two lectures, I'll, I'll give you very concrete examples. But today I don't need the details of this, so I just want to find the picture. And so the, the point is that so we have this a priori. You have your, your set of equations. And you decide very quickly whether it has solutions in all the completions. That's something you can do in a very short amount of time. But then you want to decide whether there's a rational point. 
And then this is, it could be that this set is not empty, but this one is empty. Okay. And so there's this, this sort of um, guiding conjecture. Maybe. Yeah, okay. So this is a guiding conjecture. Sorry, I'm just repeating things I did last time. Uh, which is that uh, for X rationally connected, Well, there's a coincidence between this, the, the closure of the set of rational points and the Brownman in set. So that's the conjecture. Which is supported by some evidence, but uh, not an infinite amount of evidence. Uh, we will see uh, more about the evidence later. So let's see, when is this known? So this is known. Yeah, maybe this one at the bottom. So, okay, so this is known. So I, I repeat things from last time, okay? Uh, if X contains an open set U, uh, open, Zariski open, and uh, U is a homogeneous space of a connected algebraic group. G over the number field K. And the stabilizers, so for, for all X in U of K bar, K bar is an, it denotes an algebraic closure of X. Uh, K bar equals algebraic closure of K. Okay, so so in Russian you don't have to discuss whether it's an algebraic closure or the algebraic closure. That's good. <laughs> uh, U of K bar. The stabilizers. The stabilizer at X is connected. So yeah. I mean, of course, because U is a homogeneous space of U of K bar, G of K bar acts transitively on the points of U of K bar. So the discussion whether the stabilizer is connected doesn't depend on the point you look at. Uh, yeah, I tend to write small and bad. So tell me if you don't if you think things is too small. Um, okay, so the assumption is stabilizer is connected. In fact, there's another or finite abelian or abelian. In fact, this is another possibility which uh, has been proved. So that's that. So this conjecture is known. If so this is one case, okay. So okay, right. So more cases. So this was one. Uh, second case, well, it's been known for a long time. Well, there's something called the circle method in analytic number theory. This is analytic number theory. And they proved the conjecture. If you take uh, for x, say so simply in P and K, uh, um, smooth hypersurface. So it's given by equation f of s some degree. And the, the, the number of variables is much bigger than the degree. So typically for a long time they worked over q, but recently, I mean the last say 10 years, people starting working more and more of arbitrary number fields, and they have conditions like n bigger than d square log d or this kind of conditions. So maybe this is a very British technique, <laughs> but it's very powerful. And so there have been spectacular cases. So for instance, when d equals three, which is a very interesting case, cubic hypersurface. So the situation is that the conjecture 
over there uh, implies that uh, if n is at least 4, the Hasser principle holds. Because as soon as you're at, in dimension at least 4, there's no bra group. So the bra group doesn't count. So, yeah, so that's the conjecture. Any cubic form in five variables should satisfy the Hasser principle. Any smooth cubic form in five variables should satisfy the Hasser principle. And so this is implied by the conjecture. And what is known, and this is uh, his brown and uh, Hule, and also this work of Browning, is that uh, this is true. Well, this is proved. If um, n is at least, uh, sorry, uh, at least eight. Okay, this is uh, this, this is known. So the Hasser principle is true if you, if you have at least nine variables. And now there's something interesting which happened uh, very recently: is that uh, you could ask yourself, okay, number fields are difficult. Maybe functions from one variables are, e are easier. And indeed, there is some recent work of so. See, if you replace k by a function field one variable, function field of a curve, there's, uh, there's a recent work of Ji Yu uh, Chan, uh, which is very much in the spirit of com complex algebraic geometry, where it proves, okay, uh, all right, well, yes, for n at least, so it's in P at least 6. And the methods, are completely different. There are the methods which have been used by De Jong and Starr to study uh, uh, rationally connected varieties of a function field over the complex. But he manages to do it over a finite field and he gets results. So basically, you look at, the, at this as a family fibered over a curve and you want to understand the, the spaces of sections. Mm -hmm. So you have, you have to fix some degree and basically, you want to show that in the space of sections, there exists uh, an irreducible component, which is absolutely reducible. Which, and, which is absolutely reducible. Because uh -huh. the point is that if, an absolute, if you have an absolutely reducible variety, provided the, the finite field is big enough, it will have a rational point by the Langevin estimates. Uh -huh. So the whole point is to find an absolutely reducible component in some space of sections. Of course, there are many spaces. I mean, this is a, a countable union of, of, of varieties. But you have to pick one which is absolutely reducible. So this is quite spectacular because, I mean, uh, as I said, and, and the people in I think number theory, they got just n at least 8. Ah, okay. so, but this is over FQFC. Yeah? This is not over a number field, it's over QFC. Okay, so this is to get some support for this conjecture in general, which of course you may raise over a function field in one variable as you, as you have it or, or a number or, field. Uh, what yeah? have, uh, can you put some other field instead of QFC? Uh, um, okay, now the point is that rationally connected varieties, so if you take, yeah, if, if I took an algebraic closed field, it's a basic theorem of De Jong and Star, of, uh, no, sorry, of, it's a very basic theorem, uh, a fundamental theorem, so let me write this here. So if you have uh, x over c of gamma, say, this is a curve over the complex. And this is the, the generic fiber x eta over c of gamma is supposed to be geometrically rationally connected. So if you prefer the, all the all the smooth fibers are rationally connected, then the basic theorem is that this is a big theorem that there's a section. This is thick is over p one. Over, over any any curve, any curve. Ah, any so take any curve over c. And you take, in fact, it's quite easy to reduce to the case of P1. The, the statement is uh, uh, x to gamma, where gamma is a curve over C. So you have one parameter family of, of uh, rationally connected variety over C. Then, in fact, there is a section. There exists a sigma, a gamma to x, such that pi in sigma is equal to identity. So the joint fiber has a rational point. That's what he's saying in terms of, uh, if you think in terms of fields. And this is a very fundamental theorem. Uh, due to Graeber, Harris, and Star, and it was proved, I think, around 2000. And it's very important in the classification of higher dimensional varieties. So it's a generalization of the of Noether's theorem that a conic has a, or, or a CFT has a point, or the Tsen theorem. It's a generalization of Tsen theorem. 
So what this is, is this an answer to your question? So it is, I replace FQ by an algebraic closed field. Okay. So uh, what would be the result? So the, so the result of GU Chan, uh, this uh, one, no, this one here. So if you oh, uh, here. the same uh, problem. Uh, okay, for the problem, no, for cubic, so it's been known for a long time that if you take any cubic, so the point is that C of, so in this case, if I take C of a curve, this is a C1 field. But is any form of degree D uh, in n variables as a, as a non-trivial zero as soon as n is at least equal to D? You uh, don't need n squared, you only need... Oh yeah, over, 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 yeah, because this is C, this is simpler. Okay. <laughs> it's simpler, yeah. Yeah, but when you took FQ, then it's somehow it's, it's, you go to C2 fields. So for instance, over FQ of C, it's been known. You don't need all this, I think, number theory to decide that any cubic form in 10 variables over FQ of C always has a point. Any cubic hypersurface over FQ of C uh, defined by cubic form in at least 10 variables always has a zero, non-trivial zero. That's a very simple, there's a line proof this in thesis, 1950. Okay, so this is some, some, some evidence for the conjecture. Uh, then there's been, there's been more evidence, which I will discuss later in the, in the, in the lectures. So there's more, I mean, more evidence, which I will discuss later in the lectures, but maybe I stop for this. Let's simply say the conjecture is very strong because it implies that if we take uh, any x in Pn k, where x is a, hyper, a smooth hypersurface, of degree d, so I'm back to k number field, huh? of degree d, and n is at least equal to d, and I assume that n is at least equal to 4, then the conjecture says that the Hasser principle holds. Because this condition here, together with this, well, this condition here, implies that the prob of x is equal to the prob of k. So there's no uh, no condition coming from the Brouwer group equals zero. So that would say that you know you make any non-singular form of degree n in P n, it should satisfy the Hasser principle, as provided n is at least four. Okay, for for n equals three, you have some counterexamples, but that's just a <laughs> very low dimension. So that's a very strong conjecture. Okay, and the conjecture also implies, I said that last time, so let me repeat this also, the conjecture implies that uh, any finite group uh, H, C, is a Galois group of a Q. So I, at some point I explain why it implies it, but it's not very complicated. So that tells you that it's a very strong conjecture. <laughs> too much, yeah, too much possibly. Okay, so now what I want to discuss today, so now I want to go into some, pr some proofs and arguments. So I want to discuss how one tries to prove this conjecture by using vibrations. So this is a very standard idea in algebraic geometry. You, you, you look at your variety, you fiber it. So, so the question is given x, and I like to write it like this. And I have a one parameter, parameter family, x goes to p1. So x over k is smooth projective geometrically connected as usual. And uh, the vibration f is on two. And the gel fiber, or the geometric fiber you want, is, uh, is, uh, is absolutely reducible. Is smooth. Well, actually, it has to be smooth, smooth, and absolutely and uh, geometry connected. Okay, so geometrically, you think of some, some object like this. This fiber over P one, and then you have some some bad fibers, something that break, it may break up like this or over K bar. Okay, and then the 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 general approach is. Um, if uh, the fibers xt, xt for t in P1 of k, so of a rational points, uh, satisfy the conjecture, then 
does x satisfy it? So for all t, all t, all, all t, well, almost all t. Let's make almost all t because you don't want to look at the singular ones. Okay. In fact, you can refine this. Uh, I mean, you want all the t in a lot of Zarys Koppen set, but you can even take uh, in practice. It's interesting to take t just in the Hilbert set, uh -huh. even smaller. Okay. Yeah, try to. Okay. So there is it. Okay. Right. So uh, let me start with a, a general statement. question does x does x satisfy the conjecture so if if the fiber satisfy that so if so let me write it if for t in u of k where u is an open set in p1k not empty we have that x t of k top is equal to x t of a k bro does that imply that x of k top is equal to x of a k bra. That's the question. Okay. And uh, a simpler case is suppose the fiber satisfied the Asser principle. Does it, is it true? And weak approximation. Okay. We suppose that fiber for each fiber, smooth fiber, we have this nice property that the closure of the set of rational points in the fiber is equal to the Brahmanian set of the fiber. No? Uh, just, so, this projection, projection to P1? It's a projection to P1, yeah. To P1. But then uh, you have U in. U is an opposite in, P, in P1. Oh, okay. Sorry, in P1, okay. So I, I just take away the singular fibers. Okay. That's, that's a general question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Of course, a weaker question is if the Asser principle holds for. X t for all, almost all x, x t, does as a principle hold for x? That's a simpler question, but this one really has a negative answer. Ah. Whereas this one, there's some hope. So we'll see these this negative answers, but I can tell you right away. Uh, the negative uh, example, starting, like a starting example, in fact, is if you look at, so this is something which is proved by Iskowski. It didn't, well, it did. you look at y squared plus z squared equals 3 minus x squared, uh, x squared minus 2 over q. So this is a conic bundle. Or a P1Q, I mean, you can compactify it, okay? By, by the x, y, z goes to x. For any given value of x, you get a conic. Okay? And then the statement is that uh, here, uh, x of q is empty, but x of a q is not empty. But here, all the fibers are conics, so they satisfy the principle. Uh -huh. So the fibers satisfy as a principle, the total space doesn't satisfy it. Okay. Again, we'll go through this example later. So I want to start with very simple cases where we will be able to prove something. Okay. So here's the first simple case. So here's a theorem. But you'll see that assumptions are very strong. So let f x goes to p1k be a vibration. So, I mean, same hypothesis as before. X is smooth, projective, geometrically connected, and the fiber at the bump is on two, and the general fiber is smooth and geometrically connected. Okay. Now, assume. So, K is always a number field. Assume that for all the closed points M, this time it's all the closed points, but not only the rational points, but the closed points. Um, the xm over the field kappa of m, which is the real field, is, uh, let me say, maybe simple, is, is, um, is um, geometrically connected. Okay. 
I, I'll explain in a minute uh, this assumption. So assume this. Okay. So assume that for any closed point, kappa of m is really filled at m. So typically, uh, uh, here, if I take x equals uh, root 3, I'm in trouble. Because I get 0 here, and the fiber is y squared plus x squared equals 0. Two components. Okay. Okay, so that, and this is a closed point. I mean, of course, the closed point is the two of them together. It's these two together. Okay. Root 3 and minus root 3. In that case. So assume that uh, So this doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, and assume that the Hasser principle and weak approximation hold for the smooth fibers xt for t in um, p1 of k each time xt is smooth then Hasser principle and weak approximation hold for x. Okay, that's a general theorem. And I want to explain the proof. So, proof. The first time I was in Russia, many years ago, uh, I gave a talk at the Shafari seminar, and then I I did things like that theorem and I underlined theorem and I put a big mark like this and proof and underlined proof and people were laughing in the room and I didn't understand why. Mm -hmm. Well, so afterwards I asked my friends why they were laughing and they said they laugh because you don't do that here. Just speak. <laughs> you don't underline. Ah. <laughs> so, so it's uh, trivial. Okay, so proof is this is that uh, you extend x to p1k over an open set of the ring of integers. So you, you start thinking in terms of schemes. So S is a finite set of places. Uh, OS is the ring of S integers. And K. And then you have your f, which you extend to a map f, say f, uh, let's call it still f, well no, let's call it capital F, from x to p1 OS. It's just you have finite many coefficients, so you, the coefficients lie in, in OS, you extend it like this. And now you look at EGA48, and you look at uh, the set of points, schematic points, where some property is satisfied. So here, so this is EGF 4 8, so paragraph 8. So the set of points where on the, when you have a map like this from x to y, and a morphism, and you look at the points in y, the schematic points, where the fiber is connected, the fiber is uh, of a given dimension, the fiber is whatever. Okay. And then you find that for the property of being geometry integral, which is what we want here, mm -hmm. it's okay, it's constructible. So the set of points, the set of points M in P1 OS, now any, any point, close to any schematic point, so the P1 is the P1 is like this, but the P1 OS is like that. There's P1K here. Here is K, which is in the spec OS. And here I have P1 OS. The set of M in P1 OS such that uh, the fiber XM over the field kappa of M is absolute, is the geometry integral. is a constructible set. Okay. So that's a general fact about having a morphism like this of, uh, between say Noetherian schemes and morphism of finite time between more, uh, okay. And now, but what we know is that our constructible set contains the whole P1K. Okay. okay. By the, by, the, by the assumption. So the conclusion is that this constructible set, in fact, so you look at this constructible set, 
uh, it, it will contain, uh, if you take away finite linear fibers, so that implies that shrinking S, shrinking, making it smaller, huh? so that implies that uh, you, know, you have a constructible set which contains this P1K. So it contains a P1 spec OS dash. So, so it contains P1 OS dash, where S dash is contains S is still finite. Okay, so now we look at this. So now, now we are in, so let me, let me call it, I, now I have x goes to p1 and I call it s again. And then, so now we, we change the name of s dash, so we have s here. Now we have, now, for m in, p, in p1 OS, the fiber xm over kappa of m is absolutely reducible. And now all these varieties are of the same type. So the Hilbert polynomial, if you want, is, is, is the same over, uh, for all of them. And so what happens is that if the cardinality, if M is a closed point, this time a closed point of P1 OS, then the, the, the real field kappa of M is a finite field. because it's a close point, okay? And then, uh, if I look at the fiber of, of the point M, and I look at the smooth locus, and I look at the set of its points over kappa of M, I find that this is not empty if the cardinality of kappa of M is smaller than some absolute constant, which only depends on the situation. Constant. And this is the Langevin estimates for the number of points of a variety of a finite field. Of points of, and this is absolutely important, of an absolutely reducible variety of a finite field. Okay, and maybe here I should say Nisnevich. But this is not your Nisnevich, this is an older one. <laughs> okay. Ah. okay, so uh, so the, the point is that Vey proved, well actually, this thing, there's a paper of Lang and Vey, uh -huh. which proves this statement. Uh -huh. And now the point is that Vey proved the, the, the Vey estimates uh -huh. for of curves or arbitrary genus, uh -huh. which are very precise. Uh -huh. But in fact, even weaker estimates mm -hmm. are enough to do some inductive ah, procedure okay. that enables you to get this kind of statement for, for a variety of arbitrary dimension. Mm -hmm. uh, the fibers are closed. The fibers, the fibers are? Closed? Well, it's proper morphism. I didn't write proper? Or does no, no, no. Fibers in me. Both is fine, but, yeah. uh, but fibers are for arbitrary dimension. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fibers. Yeah, he made a drawing and yeah, but no, yeah. And fibers are arbitrary dimension. Yeah, arbitrary dimension. Yeah, yeah. fibers. Fibers of arbitrary dimension. So, roughly okay. speaking, the number of points, roughly speaking, uh, uh, I mean, not depends, but the, I'll say, the estimate of uh, number of points in each fiber uh, is more or less the same. Yes. Uh, yeah, more or less the same because the topology of the. Well, it basically, it's q to uh, basically. I mean, the variety is of dimension d. It will yeah. be approximately q to the power d. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, this different the number difference between this and q to the power d will be bounded by something, okay. Yeah. Okay. which uh, I mean, which in very concrete cases like a curve of genus smooth curve of genus g, you, you get this very precise estimate. But in general, there's a bound like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. But of course, you want absolutely reducible mm -hmm. because it's it's completely false. I mean, if you take you know, uh, if you take a cubic curve. Mm -hmm. Or a finite field is at a point, but if you take three conjugate lines mm -hmm. with three conjugate points, mm -hmm. you can get this without a, even one rational point. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's not yeah. absolutely reducible. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so Langevin is okay. Now, now how do we go on? So okay, so now 
uh, I claim that claim the map from x of kv to p1 of kv induced by f is onto for v not in s. So for almost all v, the induced map on local points is subjective. Okay. So proof. Well, the proof is in fact that this is proper. So in fact, we look at x of ov goes to p1 of ov. This is the same. This is x of kv equals x, and this is p1 of kv. Okay, now if we look at our x goes to p1 OS, and we look at a point of p1 over v that gives a map from spec OV to p1 OS over OS. This is your this is your point. So I took an arbitrary point here in p1 of kv. I view it as a p1 of OV, and I get a morphism spec OV to p1 OS, and I pull back to this thing to this to this sigma x sigma. Here, so let's pull back, and of course the x sigma. So we have x sigma with respect OV. The generic fiber of respect KV is well, whatever it is, it's uh, what you're interested in. It's the fiber over the KV point, but then there's a special fiber of the finite field. field here, and you look at this x sigma over fv, and this is exactly the fiber over some, it's the inverse image because there's, well, there's a field extension here, but the, the, I look at the close point here, I get a close point here in P1 OS, and over this I get a variety over a finite field which has a smooth point. So the conclusion is that this thing has a smooth point, x sigma fv smooth of fv is not empty and then use Hensel to lift to a point here okay. no, it's, it's not a very deep theorem it's a mm -hmm. this is the key Yes, the, this claim is proved. the claim the cl this claim is proved. I haven't finished proving the, the theorem about the after principle. Yeah. I've proved this. Okay, this argument led to this. So this is done. Okay, and now let's finish the proof. So now we, we had our situation x goes to p1k and f here. And we assume that so we assume that x of a k is not empty. We take a family MV, V and omega of points of X of AK. Now I may assume that each MV is in a smooth fiber. Okay, and the reason is that uh, this is the implicit function theorem. Your variety is smooth. So if you have a KV point, you have lots of KV points around, around that point, just like over the rails. If you have a smooth variety of the rails, you look at the rail points, you have one rail point, you can push them away and get uh, still very close. Okay, we can assume this. Remember, we want to approximate. So we have a, a, we are given a finite set as zero and we want to approximate the MV, MV for V. In, in, uh, we want to find a rational point on X and moreover, which is close to MV for V in S0. And for this, I want to move these MVs outside of the smooth of the singular fibers. Okay, and now, um, okay. So what you do is that you take fix S as in the as in the claim, and for good measure, let's take S containing S zero, where you want to approximate. We can increase the S if you want. Of course, it doesn't change. Okay, and then now you take now you take MV here, which you assume is in a smooth fiber. You take its image and NV in P1 of KV. 
Now, for each v in S, well, this would be true more generally, uh, if I have a smooth fiber, here I have NV, I have, I have my point MV here, there is an analytic section locally around MV. Okay, again, this is the implicit function theorem. Because I'm in a smooth fiber, I can find an analytic section here. Okay, you use that in the C infinite context, but it's the same in the periodic context. So if I'm uh, there's a, so I find a little uh, a periodic open set, a viadic open set, or real open set, depending on which V I'm looking at, around my NV. Okay? Where all the fibers now have, have points. Okay, it stops somewhere, but at least here I always have points. And I have points which are close to this. And now I use, so this is the next thing. So I should say re uh, repeatedly that we use the implicit function theorem. We, we use the implicit function theorem many times. Okay, now uh, use weak approximation. in the field k. So to, 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 to get an n0 in p1 of k, where n0, I, I'd write it in a loose way, n0 minus nv is smaller than epsilon. This is epsilon here. OK, so I want my n0 to be a rational point close to nv for v in s0, for v in, in s, sorry, v in s. Okay, so I, t I find an n0, which is close to nv for each v in s for this finite set of places s. And that is just a statement about number fields. Given in a finite set of completions of your number field and elements in the completion, you can find a uh, an element in the number field which is arbitrarily close to each of these values. Now look at, now look at the fiber xn0. Okay. Now, xn0, I claim that xn0 of kv is not empty for all v. Claim. OK, why? Well, because n0 is close to nv for v in s. And because there is this analytic section, we knew that xn0 contained the point in the completion. k0 is here, so we can find a point in the completion. And at the other places, it is for free. At the other places, the map is onto. Uh -huh. Okay, so I, I, I write it. Ah, okay. Right. So, let me make a, again the drawing if you want. So I have my point NV1. Uh, yeah, it's hard to do. NV2. And then I have a, well, let's, well, anyway. Uh, um, well, okay, here's N, N0, the fiber uh, XN0, which is of K. And I repeat, so XN0 of KV uh, cont for V and S contains a point, this N0 here, so I can find a point M dash V here, M dash V. Uh, in uh, x well close to mv because it's one fact for v and s and then x and zero of kv is not empty for v not in s because any fiber has points in it all the completions Okay, and now we assume that's a principle for the smooth fibers. And we also assume weak approximation. So, conclusion, xn0 of k is not empty and contains a k point um, uh, m0 close to each uh, m, m, mv fitness and that's the end of the proof okay. 
of the serum. So the conclusion at x and zero, yeah. we assume that uh, we assume that the smooth fibers satisfy has a principal weak approximation. Mm -hmm. We produce a smooth fiber of a rational point, which has points in the all the completions. So it has a rational point, okay. and moreover, because we also assume we, it, it had a weak approximation, mm -hmm. we can even find a point. So we get this m dash v here for v and s. And then we can produce an M0, which is close to each of these M-V, because we assume we have approximation mm -hmm. and, the, and the fibers. Mm -hmm. OK. So it's a nice theorem, but the problem is that the assumptions are, is very, are very strong. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I yeah, yeah, you can comment, because that's a time. Yes. Uh, there was uh, in the lemma, but uh, so where uh, arithmetic assumptions uh, actually comes in the lab once again? Well, I mean, the arithmetic assumption is that's the principle in the fibers. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this very, uh, very strong assumption that even at the bad fibers, the situation is not too bad. So they could be the bad fibers could be singular. Is geometrically connected. This was very uh, fundamental. All the, bad functions. all the fibers are geometry connected. Uh -huh. Not like the situation over there. You see, uh -huh. the over there, what you had is over these close points, you had, you had this thing which was not geometry connected. Uh -huh. okay. okay, so you, you, you don't allow this. You allow singularities, but you don't allow uh, this, this kind of property. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's been used. It's not very so he, here the fiber is y squared plus z three over this point x equals root three, which is uh, let's call it x three minus y equals zero. That's a close point. You get the fiber y squared plus yeah. You could make it projective if you want. Okay, it's a, it's a family of projective conics like this with x y z t, and then the fiber will be y squared plus z squared equals zero. And if I go over to Q of i, it breaks up. So it is not geometric. Yeah, where it is good, or it goes into the proof to precisely to prove, to prove the, this this claim. Yeah, this is crucial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where it goes, because I said you know the the set of points. Uh, so we, we had this vibration of a P one K. See, we had this vibration over P one K. This is P one K. And this is spec OS. And I said, because at all the points here on P1K, the fibers are an integral, there exists uh, still uh, a Zaris Kelpin set containing P1K uh, for which this property is satisfied, that all the fibers at all the close points are absolutely reducible. And then you can use Langvey. Okay, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't get it. Uh, so the fibers are reducible, yeah? Absolutely reducible, yeah. Connected is not enough. No, 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 because this one, yeah. see, this one is, this one is connected. Y squared plus S yeah, squared is connected. The you say that it is geometrically connected. Geometrically connected, yeah. Ah, yeah what, I, what did I write? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Irreducible. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's, sorry, sorry. So, so absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Uh, irreducible. Sorry. In fact, I should say better. I should say geometry integral. So I don't want multiplicities. I really want this. To yeah, yeah. Okay. So, but I can make one comment about this: is that precisely this hypothesis, this hypothesis, and this is quite useful in practice, may be replaced by for all m in P1K. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for correcting this. Yeah, this is completely stupid. Yeah, uh, for MK, XM is split over kappa of M, which is to say that uh, XM over kappa of M contains 
an absolutely reusable a component of multiplicity one. So that one is enough for the for the for the theorem. No, if, uh, uh, oh yeah, yeah. If it if it was if it was double like this, you would have a trouble. Yeah. Maybe you would have trouble. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. But what you can allow is this: you can allow that the fiber has one component, and, and anything here doesn't matter. If there's just one, if there's at least one component, a y, uh, such that y over kappa of m is multiplicity one, and this one is geometry integral. Mm -hmm. Can you say? Is that reused? Uh, not by example, Because I cannot. Uh, because I answer's lemma will be wrong. That's the point. Yeah, yeah. You will have point in the yeah over the real okay. field, but then you'll have trouble to lift because you want a smooth point right. in the fiber. Right, right. Yeah, sure. yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's a uh, well, that's a nice one, but uh, so I see. I have to be careful of the time. As usual, I'm, I'm way beyond what I wanted to do. Um, yeah. Okay. Ten more minutes. Okay. So, very quickly, applications. And some of them you can do them by, uh, in a much more down to earth method. Much more applications. Uh, assume, suppose, I will come back to this later. You know the Hasse principle, and let me stick just to Hasse principle, for uh, two-dimensional quadrics. I'll come to this later. So it's, it's an important case, but let's accept it for a second. Then, if you take an equation sum ai um, xi square i am from 1 to 3 equals uh, p of t1, let's say p of t for simplicity, uh, different from 0, where P of T is a, is a, is a polynomial and the I, I in K star, then has a principle holds for this variety. And so in particular, you conclude that has a principle holds by pushing yourself, sorry? So I look at the variety with the variables X, I and T. P of T is a polynomial in T, an arbitrary polynomial. Mm -hmm. And I claim that if I look at smooth compactification, that doesn't matter. I mean, the point is, uh, we, it's, anyway, so uh, mm -hmm. you prove as a principle, so let's say plus weak approximation here, then you get as a principle plus weak approximation for this variety. And you can do that in very, I mean, people did it in a very concrete way without doing all this nonsense about, uh, you know, Nisnievich and all these things, uh, Langvey, but uh, for, because quadrics are much simpler. But anyway, that, that, that has a principle hold for this. And this implies that it has a principle hold for, say, five dimensional, for three dimensional, three dimensional quadrics. Because uh, three dimensional quadrics, basically, you look at some, something like this equals uh, b t square plus c. Okay? That's a, five dim a three dimensional quadric. Special case, but it's, it's completely zero. So that's uh, uh, basically what happens is that you fiber over t. See, and what happens in this case is when I fiber over t, in at least in a one, even when p of t equals zero, I get something which is a cone. So uh, you, you must homogenize the thing if you want to. I have an x four square here. Okay. So even when p of t is zero. Then the, what I get is is actually reducible, and reduced. Mm -hmm. 
It's the cone of a, of a conic. Okay. But uh, should your polynomial P of T uh, have no uh, multiple uh, roots? No. 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 It's not necessary here. Uh -huh. okay. No. No. It's it. It's it. There's no condition here. Uh -huh. Uh, I mean, the, you know, if you want the space to be non-singular, but I mean, you, you, the, it's, it's, it's okay. Uh -huh. Something I should say is that Hasser principle and weak approximation uh -huh. are properties. So, as far as weak approximation is concerned, it's basically a property of, of the function field. Mm -hmm. So, if you have weak approximation for one variety with smooth variety, mm -hmm. then you have it for any birational equivalent one, even an open one. The Hasser principle is more, more subtle. You have to stick to smooth projective varieties. If you just say this with the Hasser principle. So that's why I have this affine variety, but in fact, you look at a projective model. And so here I take t equals zero, but note that in fact, at infinity, uh, if you change the variables, you'll manage to get also a cone. Even at infinity, you get a cone with a, su a suitable model. Okay? So that the theorem applies. But of course, you can do it by hand. Okay? And a similar example is, which is, uh, which is amusing, is. Uh, um, No, actually, this one is more complicated, so I'll, I'll do it next. Okay, now, um, yeah, I have a problem. Okay, so we'll discuss what we do during the second hour. Okay. <laughs> like, okay. Whether we stick to this topic or whether we switch to the other one, because I, uh -huh. I really have. Okay. Um, okay, so let me go on on this question of subjectivity, because that's a very fascinating problem here. So, this property here. Let's, let me say what I want to say about this. Here's a beautiful theorem, which was proved, which I conjectured, but which was proved by Jan Deneff not such a long time ago. You take a K, a number field, and you take a F from X to Y, a projective. dominant morphism of smooth projective varieties. Um, and uh, you assume that, assume that the generic fiber is uh, smooth and is geometry integral. So I'm not interested in saying double covers or things like that. Okay, assume the generic formula. Okay, and then you make the hypothesis that for any discrete version ring A in the field of fraction of Y containing K, so A is a discrete version ring. Sorry, discrete valuation ring. There exists a model, so let's call it, this is an XA of a spec A with generic fiber, precisely the generic fiber we added here, X theta, such that precisely XA is split, so that uh, such that uh, the special fiber of a, uh, kappa, such that the special fiber of pi a, of f a, is split. Okay, so you take arbitrary discrete version rings in the function field of y, and you assume that uh, the, for each such thing you can produce a model of a spec a, such that the special fiber has a component of multiplicity 1, which is geometry integral. Okay. Has a component of multiplicity 1, which is geometry integral, split in this sense, yeah, okay? This one. And then the conclusion is that uh, for almost all v, the map from x of kv to y of kv is on 2. Okay, so it's the higher dimension analog of the theorem we saw there with x goes to p1. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy to prove. So, I mean, the, the, the statement I proved for you would work for any x goes to a curve, 
but if the bottom variety is of high dimension, then uh, there are really horrible things which may happen. So this is the right assumption. For instance, you cannot simply assume that on your on, the, on your on a, on a given surface, so if y is a surface, you cannot simply assume that at points of connection on that surface, the system is fine. Mm -hmm. You must blow up. You must look at all the blow-ups of the of the surface down here. And this uh, this theorem, okay, this is really quite elaborate theorem using uh, log logarithmic geometry. It has a corollary. which is the x quotient theorem. So the, actually, I saw how the conjecture implies the corollary. I say a word about this. So the x quotient theorem is a famous theorem, which has to do with, there was a question of Art, my, uh, Emil Artin, long ago, asked, is QP a C2 field? So that is, uh, is it true that any form of degree d in n bigger than d square variable has a non-trivial zero? The point is that this is true for fp double parenthesis t, and these two fields are very, very similar. Okay, but this one is the answer is no. So what Hax and Koshen uh, proved is, uh, and I think here, uh, since I, as people would say, since I'm in this country, I should write <laughs> a name here. There's also Ershoff who uh, had to do with this thing. Um, so th they proved that, so th they proved the following theorem is that uh, given uh, D uh, integers and N, uh, give, sorry, given D, an integer and N, uh, there exists a constant which depends on the C of D such that for all primes P bigger than this constant C of D, uh, QP is a C2 field. That is, uh, I'm sorry, uh, any form, uh, let's put it that way. For any P bigger than C of D, any form over QP in N bigger than these square variables has a non-trivial zero. Over QP. So that's a quite famous. Uh, I mean, I remember when I, I'm old enough to remember when it came out and people were very impressed. So, what is the connection with what we've seen here? Connection is this: is that you consider uh, consider um, the variety. Give, so you take p a capital N cross p N, and you take the universal. You fix N bigger than d square, and you look at the universal equation. Some uh, so this will be x zero i zero. Uh, x, uh, x n i n, the sum of the i j is equal to, to, to d, and we have this i zero a i n. So this is the, the generic form, and there are, this capital N corresponds to the number of coefficients. Okay, so we've got f equals zero inside this, and we look at the two projections to p capital N and to p little n. Okay, so this is a universal form of degree d in n bigger than n fixed bigger than d square variables. Now it's completely obvious that if you fix the uh, the x size, uh, you get something linear. Okay, so there's one projection where the in fact you get a, a projective bundle on one side, so f is smooth. Okay, and now uh, um, what I'm interested in is so let's call this variety x. X is given x, x is given by f equals zero. 
So X is a smooth variety because we have this, uh, this projective bundle. Um, if I fix the, I mean, uh, wait, wait a minute, I have to look at the right side. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, this is, this one is, a, is this one is, a, we fix the XI so we get something protective here. Okay, so X is smooth, the fibers are smooth. And then look at X goes to P capital N. And you look at any field which contains the field. X of F goes PN of F. Well, you're asking whether for given coefficients, whether you have a solution. Okay. And now the fact is, so this is a proposition, which, which I proved, but using some sort of deep theorem of Collar. is that the assumption n bigger than d square implies that this hypothesis is satisfied. This, uh, this, this hypothesis here is satisfied. So it's a geometric way of looking at n bigger than d square. If you're n bigger than d square... Is it, uh, um, uh, this uh, is about geometry. This is very ge this is very geometric, yeah yeah. So I mean the proof. So the proof here, the proof is here is algebra because I like you know arbitrary fields. <laughs> but the pr so 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 this is okay. The, the, the fact, so I check I proved this okay, and the result by Collar was in dimension one less. The result by Collar was this one is basically about C two fields the notion of C two fields, and the result by Collar is basically about C one fields. He proved uh, a conjecture of X. In characteristic zero, well, they proved it in characteristic zero. He proved that if you have a form, so you have a field k of characteristic zero, I repeat, k, so f of characteristic zero. Oh no, sorry, uh, uh, capital K. Case of k is zero. And you take a form f of degree d. And the number of variables n is uh, bigger than, uh, so n is at least d, so we have at least uh, one more variable, like say a conic, think of a conic, okay? Look at an equation like this over the field k. Then there exists a sub-variety y in x, this is x, over the field k, which is geometric and integral. And this he used for this he used uh, he used uh, uh, he used um, uh, what is it Fivag Shokurov vanishing theorems. So generalization of Kodera vanishing theorems. So this is over any field of characteristic zero. That's why the restriction of characteristic zero, because it uses things from the complex algebraic geometry. And it proved this fact. So this fact, so this conjecture of X is motivated by, the, motivated by the following remark, that if you take, you have this theorem of uh, Chevalier warning, that if you take a form of degree D and you have at least uh, D plus one variables, then over a finite field, there's always a solution. But uh, look at your equation, you know, f equals zero. Over the Rebecca closure, I can break up into pieces which are conjugate. And then the possible rational points, they must be at the intersections. But you could go on like this, and in the end you might get just two conjugate points, and then you would never have a rational point. Except if it is a fact that if you take a form like this, a uh, hypersurface like this, there's always inside a variety which is geometrical. So if you think of conics, you know, a conic can be like this, or it can be like this, but here you have this, this sub-variety y, which is your integral inside here. Okay. This one is your integral inside here. Okay. So in these two cases, so if you take a conic, it is true that a conic contains, over any field, mm -hmm. contains a geometric integral sub-variety. Mm -hmm. And th this is the statement here, which was conjectured by X in, over any field, and which was proven in characteristic zero by Collar, using this deep theorem from complex algebraic geometry. It's a beautiful paper by Collar. Right? It's a, mm -hmm. And then to go from this to this, it's basically, it was a trick. I mean, uh, 
which uh, I can explain at some point, but not today. Um, I mean, maybe in private. Uh, how you know, do you get something about C1? And if you had one variable, you, you get to C2. So it's basically the idea. You go to some enormous field. Uh, uh, there exists y over k. There's a sub variety y, define a field k, which is semi integral. That, that, is, that is the conjecture of x. Uh, uh, yeah? Maybe zero dimensional. Yeah, maybe zero dimensional. Uh -huh. You're quite happy. Uh -huh. If you have a rational point, then you're finished. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, if you have a rational point, you're happy. But uh, in general, you won't have, well, I mean, you don't expect to have a rational mm -hmm. point. Uh, uh, and uh, say, is it typically, I mean typically, this y is expected to be hypersurface uh, uh, in x? No, no, it no, can be no, anything. No, it no. can be anything. No, I mean, typically here, you see, I mean, you see if my two things are conjugate, mm -hmm. uh, just what I get is just a rational point here. Mm -hmm. That's the only one. Okay. That is, uh, no, no, it, typically it, it's a question about how things degenerate. 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 So, I mean, so typically this is the way Collard does it. He starts from a, well, I don't want to give you the details, but it's very complicated, but he starts with a smooth one and looks at the degeneracy. And the degeneracy, in fact, for instance, in his case, it will rather degenerate not to something like this, but like what you would do if you blow up, so that you would get something like this. You get two conjugate lines, and then you get this line, which is defined over K, but with a multiplicity. Mm -hmm. okay. Imagine you have this and you blow up. You, know? you blow up, you, you get this. Uh, if you think of this in a family. Okay. And then in that case, yeah, it will be a sub-variety of the proper co-dimension, but it, there might be a multiplicity. But it will be geometry integral. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I, I guess it's a proper time to stop here. Mm -hmm. So I, what I did today was to discuss situation when all the fibers are geometry integral. Okay? So what I plan to do in the next lecture, which will be either <laughs> today or next week, we'll see, we'll have to decide in the... <laughs> is to go on with, to discuss what happens when uh, you have one bad fiber which is reducible, you have two, can you still do something? <laughs>